Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're brand new here, my name is Stav and this is my channel, She Equips Herself. I'm so glad you're here today. I sent an email out to my email list last week with a fun survey that was designed to get to know where you all are in your gun journeys. So I asked questions like, how long have you been carrying? What kind of gun do you like to carry? I asked about your holsters. And then one of the questions I asked was what kind of videos you'd like to see from me. And one request that I got from a bunch of you guys was to do a video on Christians carrying guns because I'm a Christian. I've mentioned that on this channel before, so I think a lot of you know that about me. So I'm excited to talk about that today. So grab a beverage, let's have a little chat. you guys a little bit about my faith background so you know where I'm coming from. I grew up going to a Protestant church, grew up reading the Bible, going to Sunday school, going to youth group, very involved in the church, and then, you know, teenage years, early adult years kind of straight away. I didn't really become a believer until college. So that's when I really started to build my relationship with God. And it's been up and down since, as many Christians would know, our journeys aren't usually one of these. It's usually something like this. So I had a bunch of these and now I'm up here. So lately my relationship with God has been growing a lot and I'm super thankful for that and I would have to say it's mostly due to me actually spending time in the word and praying and that is something so basic but it really helps so if you're struggling try doing those two things consistently having said that I do believe that the Bible is the ultimate authority here and everything that you hear you should check against scripture because I believe that this is the inspired word of God um, this is my Bible. It's a CSB study Bible and I got this recently. It's actually my first study Bible. I've never had a study Bible before and now that I have one, I don't know how I've gone so many years without one. Um, I did a lot of research before I bought this one and I actually watched a few YouTube videos reviewing different Bibles. Did you even know that that was a thing? It's a thing. So I ended up with this one. I'll link this below in case you guys want it. I really love it. It has like maps and pictures and really good introductions to each book of the Bible. And my favorite feature is that at the bottom of each page, so this is the scripture up here, you have a verse by verse breakdown and explanation of all the verses and references and what they might mean. And it's just really helpful when it comes to studying the Bible. So I've been really loving this Bible. The translation I grew up with was NIV. This is a CSB, which from my research is kind of a combination of the NIV and the ESV, the English Standard Version. But this is what I use, and everything that you hear, sermons you hear, people you hear preaching, you should always, even whatever I'm going to say today, you should check it against the Bible, because this is the ultimate authority um, and God's word. So as a YouTuber and someone who carries a gun daily, and it's a huge part of my life and what I talk about on my YouTube channel. I get comments every once in a while from other Christians asking like, how do you reconcile being a Christian and carrying a gun? And then other people who say like, you shouldn't carry a gun because you're a Christian, you're a hypocrite. So there are a bunch of different opinions out there about this topic. I'm just gonna share mine with you because these are two things I'm very passionate about. Jesus and my right to defend myself. So here's how I reconcile it. Now, the biggest argument that I hear against Christians carrying guns is that we are supposed to be peacemakers. If you look at the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew, it's chapter five, verse nine, it says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Peace and violence don't really coexist. So that I think is where the biggest struggle is when we're trying to reconcile carrying guns as Christians. Jesus is also called the Prince of Peace and we are called to be mirrors of him. We're called to mirror his character and strive to have the character of Christ. So if he's the Prince of Peace and I'm supposed to be as much like him as I can in terms of his character, how can I justify carrying a gun? I think that it comes down to why you own or carry guns. And I also believe that there's a difference between murder and killing. We all know what murder is. Killing someone, for example, in a case of self-defense, that's different from murder. I'm trying to save my own life or the life of another innocent person. That's not murder. If we look at Psalms, I love the book of Psalms, we're gonna go to chapter 144. 
and verse 1. So this is a psalm of David, and the first verse in the psalm says, Blessed be the Lord my rock, who trains my hands for battle, and my fingers for warfare. So I believe that there is a time and place for violence. Okay, and then in Psalm 1834 it says, He trains my hands for war, my arms can bend a bow of bronze. Well, that sounds hard. So lots of mention of weapons and battle and being strong for warfare, things like that in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, we do see the apostles carrying swords and Jesus didn't seem to be against them carrying the swords. We do see that he reprimanded Peter right before Jesus was gonna be arrested and crucified. Okay, so this story, I think it's in all four gospels, but at least three but I'm gonna read from John chapter 18 verse 10 then Simon Peter who had a sword drew it struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear at that Jesus said to Peter put your sword away am I not to drink the cup the father has given me so Jesus knew that Peter had a sword and he didn't seem to be against them carrying swords but he was against the use of it in that specific situation so I don't think that Jesus would be against us carrying firearms to protect ourselves and to protect innocent life but it's all going to depend on what's happening in that moment so he knew what had to happen how things were going to play out and that this was supposed to happen he had to get arrested he knew it all because he's god so why do you carry why do i care i'm going to talk about myself because i don't know why you carry you can answer that for yourself i carry because i value life and i think that life is a gift that god has given me so my life is a gift my family's lives are gifts. Life is precious and it's something that is to be valued and defended. So I had someone comment on a YouTube video recently about me carrying a gun as a Christian in a negative way and I responded using, I think I used a fire extinguisher as an example, but this could also work for seatbelts. Yes, I trust God. Um, I trust him with every part of my life, but I'm given tools and he's given me a brain to use these tools to keep myself safe. For example, in a car, I'm gonna wear a seatbelt because if I get in an accident, the seatbelt's gonna keep me safe. Um, I'm gonna keep a fire extinguisher in my kitchen in case there's a fire because I can then put the fire out. So yes, God's gonna protect me, but I also have a role to play with the abilities and knowledge that he's given me. Ultimately, whatever happens is in his hands, but he has given me a brain and knowledge and skills and abilities to be able to do my part. Another thing is that if you start to learn the character of God and you really get to know him, you realize how much God loves justice. That's like one of the biggest parts of who he is. He loves justice. Let's look at Deuteronomy, way back in the Old Testament. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Chapter 32, verse four. I love using scripture to talk about stuff like this because like I said, this is the ultimate authority. Three and four. For I will proclaim the Lord's name, declare the greatness of our God. The rock, his work is perfect, all his ways are just. And then we're gonna look at Psalm 11, seven. There are a lot of verses about God's justice and that part of his character, but I'm just gonna give you a couple examples. For the Lord is righteous, he loves righteous deeds, the upright will see his face. Righteousness, as defined by Webster's Dictionary, is the quality of being morally right or justifiable. So God loves justice, he loves righteousness, it's part of who he is. There is evil in this world, and Jesus even says, in this world you will have trouble. But that doesn't mean that we need to just be sitting ducks and be totally victimized by the evil in the world. I remember that shooting in, I think it was White Settlement, Texas. Someone shot the shooter that was gonna kill a bunch of people in that church, and I don't think anybody would look at that and be like, oh, how dare he have a gun in the church? because that guy could have shot a lot more people. When I arm myself with a deadly weapon, I need to consider the difference between self-defense and vengeance. If someone is trying to cause death or serious bodily harm to me or another innocent person, and I decide to defend myself or that person, knowing the laws of self-defense, that's different from if someone does something to me and then I act to avenge what they did. Th those two things are totally different. We are not called to seek vengeance. God even says vengeance is mine, like that's his to deal with. We are called as Christians to forgive. Oh my 
sorry, why it's coming in and out. Um, we are called as Christians to forgive. In one of my Bible studies, we're talking about the parable of the ungrateful servant. The disciples asked Jesus how many times they should forgive someone who sins against them. And he tells them 70 times, they say seven times, and he says 70 times seven. Like, no, you forgive them as many times as they ask you, as long as they're repentant. We do things against God that are a million times worse than what we do against each other, and yet he forgives us. So forgiveness is a huge part of who we are called to be as Christians. And so I think those stories we hear of like someone in court forgiving the person who wronged them, those like really hit home and make us see that character in Christ. Like it's just amazing, but it's hard to do. So we're not called to be vengeful. We're called to be forgiving. But I think we're also called to use our brains and defend innocent life. If you believe the Bible, you believe that God in the end will get the ultimate justice. And that's not ours. That's not ours to handle. On earth, we are called to be peacemakers as much as we can. Yes, I'm going to defend innocent life because it's valuable, but I'm not going to seek vengeance. Those are two very different things and it's important to really grasp that um, if you're going to arm yourself with a deadly weapon. It would be unwise for us to pretend that bad things don't happen and that God's just going to take care of me and I don't have to do anything. We've seen those church shootings, shootings at other religious gatherings, and I think that the ultimate point is that God values the state of my heart. He knows my heart better than I know my heart. And the same with yours. He knows your heart better than you know your heart. Let's go to 1 Samuel, what was it? 1 Samuel 16, 7. This is one of my favorite verses because it really sums up our relationship with God versus our relationship with man. Humans do not see what the Lord sees, for humans see what is visible, but the Lord sees the heart. I've heard this in another translation. It says, um, man judges by outward appearance, but the Lord judges the heart. So God ultimately knows our hearts. If you're carrying a gun in order to seek out problems or cause other people harm versus if you're carrying a gun to defend innocent life that is created after the image of God, those are two totally different things and he's going to see that in your heart. So lastly, make sure you're following the law. Take a use of force class so that you know the laws in your state before you start carrying a gun out and about or just in your home like know all your laws because God definitely advises us to follow the law to follow the laws set in place by those in authority so long as they don't go against his authority so just some things to think about I would love to hear your opinions on this kind of controversial topic please leave your comments below so that we can have a little chat about what you guys think about all this um, I hope that was a little helpful. There's so much to unpack with this topic and I think it's so interesting because I just love learning about this stuff and what God thinks about things versus what we think about them. So let me know what you guys think. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe. Bye.